Robert Alcock. You're watching Totally Plugged In. Hello to my three original subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, this is just a quick video to let you know I have a really epic road trip. This is the perfect opportunity to demonstrate what electric cars can do. Uh, it's about a 6,000 mile trip around the country for work. Uh, so I figured let me showcase uh, the technology and it's a great opportunity for people that wonder about are electric cars really feasible? Like, what are you going to do when you get in trouble? Well, I guarantee you, I'm going to get in trouble and you're going to see how it goes. So stay tuned. I'm going to have an update video tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for uh, a little curiosity in being part of a sustainable future. This was my first real electric car. I've been using it for my company for seven years. It has 165,000 miles. It's never had any maintenance done to it, except for windshield wipers and tires. It's amazing. Uh, works great, no problems. But after 165,000 miles, even though it runs great and there's no issues, the battery range has shrunk a little bit. So now this car is good for about 40 miles per charge. And the road trip I'm about to begin, I'm estimating without getting too much into the planning, is gonna be about 6,000 miles. So this car is not good for that. Last year, when the pandemic started, I made a decision to sell my gasoline van and now my business is running on 100% electric. And this was the replacement to the van. It's a little bit smaller, so sometimes it's a challenge. Uh, this is a 2017 BMW i3. I bought it used, and actually, for what I sold my little Nissan gas van for, my payments were about the same to use this. This car is 100% electric. Um, it has about 40,000, 50,000 miles on it. And it has a range somewhere in the region of 125 to 30 miles. Uh, I use it every day, drive across South Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. A couple of weeks after purchasing it, I actually took a road trip to Atlanta, Georgia, which is totally doable. But that's about, I don't know, six, uh, how far is Atlanta? Maybe 700, 800 mile trip. But to really do a long distance cross country, especially for work, this car is not practical. So on this trip, uh, I'm going to use the, we have a Tesla Model 3, which has a range of about 300 miles. Um, so this is the night before the trip. I'm still preparing, packing, doing all the crazy things a small business owner has to do before you go on a trip. So this car is all cleaned up ready to go for my helper while I'm out of town. And the Leaf uh, is kind of a backup car at the moment, or if we're doing just local deliveries, uh, this is the car we use. So the, the Leaf, I drove it earlier, and it's not 100% charged. I like to keep the cars uh, totally charged. That's why this is totally plugged in. So right now, I'm just doing a, a what they call a level one charge. Uh, this is the plug right here. And if you follow my cable across the grass uh, through here, you can see I just have a regular extension cord. And my landlord that is uh, super awesome is kind enough to let us run the extension cord through this little mail slot. And right in here. There's the outlet, just a regular 110 volt outlet. Interesting little fact, a lot of people in the electric car industry uh, don't talk very nice about charging from an outlet. They say it's super slow. You, depending on the vehicle, it, rain, it varies a bit, but you get about five miles of range for every hour that you're plugged in, which sounds not that good. But when you have a Nissan Leaf that only has 40 mile range, that means overnight you're going to get a full charge just from an outlet. And if you do the math, 
five miles an hour times by 8,760 hours, which is how many hours in a year, is about 40,000 miles, which is more than what the average American drives. So in actual fact, if you own an electric car, you don't really need a charger. You can plug in to a regular outlet with the charger that comes with the car free of charge. The BMW comes with one. The Nissan Leaf comes with one. These cars don't come with them because they're not electric. Uh, but every electric car in the market comes with a charger that you can use in any, well, not any, but most 110 volt outlets. It is Monday morning, 10.29 a.m. in Fort Lauderdale. It's 87 degrees Fahrenheit and it's a steamy 87 degrees, so I'm looking forward to driving away from the humidity a bit. Uh, I've zeroed out the trip meter, so we're at zero miles. And I have to make a stop at the office, but the first main destination is West Virginia which is 1,038 miles. Ugh, that's far. <laughs> got to Kingsland, Georgia. Uh, today is the first day of my road trip. I managed to just make it out of Florida before the sunset. One of the uh, common questions people ask about electric cars is how long do they take to charge? And if you take a road trip, uh, do you have to wait too long? And the thing that I tell people is it's a completely different philosophy. Comparing uh, charging a car to putting gas in a gas car is kind of like comparing an app, an iPhone to a dial, rotary dial telephone. Uh, they're just two completely different philosophies. The trick with electric cars is to overlap your time. So if you need to eat, if you need to go to work, if you need to sleep, whatever you need to do that takes time try to overlap it with charging. So when I take a road trip with an electric car, I, I have a kind of rule that if I'm eating, I'm charging. So on today's trip, uh, I've driven from Fort Lauderdale and I just passed, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I just passed the state line to Georgia. Um, I don't know how many miles that is off the top of my head, I'll have to I'll uh, put that in later, but uh, it's basically been a 
pretty solid days driving and I can tell you my desire to stop driving and sleep or eat or use the restroom is uh, more pressing than the cars need to get a charge. So anyway, I just plugged in here at Kingsland. I've been to this uh, charging site a few times and I kind of like it because it's right off of the highway. But also you feel like you're in the country a little bit and there's a Waffle House across the street, which uh, when you're traveling in the southern states is kind of an essential place <laughs> to get a, uh, a, I guess a, we call it in England a greasy spoon restaurant. So a good fry up, I guess this would be the closest thing. So I'm gonna grab a bite to eat and then I will report back. What people should really ask is not how long does it take the car to charge, but how long does it take to order breakfast? And if you go to Waffle House, it's fast. <laughs> One of the things that I'm discovering is tricky when you start a YouTube channel is that in life, normally you have conversations with other people and on YouTube, you're having conversation with a smartphone. And you don't really know how it how it uh, looks and feels on the other end. Uh, today I'm particularly tired because there was a lot of preparation for this trip. The work that I'm doing is uh, commercial lighting audits. So this is for buildings that want to upgrade their lighting to make it more energy efficient and sustainable. And usually most businesses so they can save lots of money. Um, this particular project, I'm visiting a hundred sites across, I believe it's 11 states, so there's going to be a lot of driving. This charging station's kind of nice. There's a, as you can see behind me, there's a really grand uh, Georgian style building and they have this uh, nice waterfall. This is a, I believe it's a chamber of commerce. It seems that it's also a police station because there's a lot of police cars and I don't think I did anything wrong, not yet. This is my Tesla Model 3. Uh, her name is Jade. She's going to be my partner in crime for this journey. Uh, I've had this car for, well, I bought it, actually, I reserved this car when they first launched the Tesla Model 3. And I don't remember how long it was from the time I reserved it to when I got it, but it was quite a long time, maybe a year. Uh, but I got the car in 2018. Uh, I've used it quite a lot myself, and I also rent it out on a website called Turo, which is sort of the Airbnb of cars. And it's already got, I think, 80,000 miles on it. And this trip is, is uh, definitely going to rack up the miles. What I've learned is these cars, especially the long range version, which is what I have, and even with the, the standard range version, when you have about 200, 225 miles of range, usually that's, uh, that's about what you need, unless you're really into long haul driving without a brake. Um, so this is what a Tesla supercharger looks like. Um, in another video, I'll show you how they work. It's, it's very simple. This, this charging station, really, I, I think it's one of my favorite ones. I've been to one somewhere that was in the downtown area that was really nice, but uh, this, is, this is a nice one. So I've only been charging for, I don't know, 30 minutes. I walked across the street to the Waffle House, which is a five minute walk, and they're so fast to serve the food that you can see there's still a little dusk left and the sun was already going down and I'm already back here. So it's been about 35 minutes. Uh, you can see here, this is flashing green. It's a little hard to tell in the video. It kind of goes white and dull. So that means it's charging. When I got here, I have to check in the video, but the range was somewhere around 40 miles remaining. And let's take a look now. Let's see what it has. 257, which is a lot more range than I'm gonna be able to drive tonight because 
uh, right actually right now I feel pretty energetic but once that toast and grits uh, kicks in I'm gonna probably be looking for a hotel so if I go down here uh, this trip I'm calling it planet YouTube and so uh, from this morning uh, it's been 379 miles um, so not a bad day is driving and hopefully I can do another 50 or 60 miles and then I'll find somewhere to stay and get up early in the morning to do the rest of the trip uh, thanks for checking out totally plugged in